Jeff Blatnick. Now no one in the 81 year history of the NCAA has won four individual championships in any sport. The only thing standing between him and that awesome accomplishment is Roger Singleton. We asked Tim Wright about that. Well, that's pretty exciting for me too, but um, like right now I'm not trying not to worry about it, you know. Um, it was a lot of pressure going into action, you know, I get a lot of interviews. Um, how you think you do or is pressure on you? I just try not to worry about it, you know, and went out and took it one match at a time. And I think you take in every individual match one at a time and um, just get that one out of the way. You find yourself one step farther. And now I beat three of them, now I'm one step farther. Um, I'm in the finals and hopefully go out and just do the same thing here. Go out and wrestle my match, my style, the way I've been doing all year. Um, and I think I can do it. I think I have a good shot at doing it. Cosmo and there he goes 118 pounds and his opponent out of Roseville Michigan is Roger Singleton and we got the match underway now uh, Tim Wright is definitely a, Grand Valley made it there by the definitely a good takedown wrestler of course, I don't know how I look for him to be dominant on his feet and Roger's gonna have to slow him down on his feet and as Roger expressed to me before the final started he feels he's gonna have to take Tim down to beat him who attends Southern Illinois right here at Edwardsville. You certainly got the capacity uh, crowd behind him here today. For watching him before his match, he seemed to be uh, very, very intense. Good concentration. He's going to have to start opening up. They both seem a little conservative at this point. Frickle, frickle. Wright is a takedown type of wrestler, as is Roger Singleton. And Jeff, what's the, what's the basic difference between what you regard as a takedown wrestler and a mat wrestler? Well, your takedown wrestlers are real good on their feet. Oh, look at that. Oh, they went out of bounds, and you almost saw Tim Ray get put to his back. He is going to have to start opening up a little bit more. A takedown wrestler is dominant at his feet. Here you see it. It gets brought over. Roger comes up, but you can see Roger went out of bounds. And when both, feet wrestler, both wrestlers' feet are out of bounds, then the whistle will blow. I think that might have woke him up. Tim seems to be coming out with a little bit, a little bit more attack. Move to the center. Move to the center. He's going to have to stay aggressive. Oh, he almost had him again. Good hip toss. Here on the edge of the mat, both Break wrestlers it. have to be very, very That's careful. There. Very careful, because the referees interpret when there's an out-of-bounds, and if you feel you're out-of-bounds and relax, that opponent can take you down. But you saw Tim come back there and be a little bit more aggressive, tried a couple upper body attacks, almost had them, but Roger's showing some real good concentration of his own and intensity of his own, and he doesn't seem to be backing away from Tim one bit. And what you'll see here, Tim's got Roger's head down, and he's going to try to spin now behind and get the takedown. One minute, 14 seconds. You hear referee John George telling both wrestlers a minute, 14 seconds remaining Boy, in the first period. Up, first guys. period is uh, three minutes, periods two and three, each comprised of uh, two-minute periods. You just saw the referee blow his whistle on stop action called a stalemate. That's when neither wrestler can improve position. The referee will recognize this, try to let them work a little bit, and if neither one can improve, hit the whistle, start them both up. And there you go. seconds left in the period he might go for some riding time well, singleton told me earlier today that to be effective against uh, tim wright he would have to score on his feet did not feel he could beat right if, if they were on the mat that's probably true he's never going to be on top of him except for the one chance he has at the start of either the second or third period depending on who wins the coin toss 33 seconds now remaining in the first period here you'll see a slow-mo of tim's takedown they were going in and out tim went underneath hooked the leg drove him over backwards took him down now you saw Roger just got away as we returned to action. On escape and the score is now on the board. That's right, it's now two to one. This is what I expected from Tim Wright, a takedown match. Wright's a crowd pleaser, and he makes no bones about it. Doesn't pin many of his opponents, but he likes to uh, run, try and run up the score. Yes, there's a uh, what's called a, a technical superiority, which counts the same as a fall, and that's when you build a 15-point lead. There's the end of the first period. Tim Wright leads, two to one. And an outstanding period. There's the point.
coin toss. Wright wins it, and he wants the up position. I believe he's going to choose neutral position. Yes, he will. You're absolutely correct. He doesn't want to let Roger get away and give him a point, so he'll just start up on the feet. The wrestler has three choices. He can start down. Actually, four. He can start down. He can start in the advantage position on the mat. But he can the start, up position. Right, the up position. He can start on their feet, or he can call what's known as defer. In other words, give the other wrestler the choice, wait to see what happens after the second period, and then make his choice based on what that situation dictates. We are in period two. It is right two, singleton one. You can see Tim is starting to open up a little bit more. He tried to duck under, almost scored. Roger's going to have to do more than counter. He's going to have to start his own attacks now. I look for him to go back for that hit chance where he almost caught Tim near the edge of the mat. A moment ago, you saw Larry Krisoff, the wrestling coach here at Southern Illinois. His team has won the last three consecutive Division II national championships. Obviously a very, very good coach. In fact, an outstanding wrestler in his day as well. Competed in the Tokyo Games, many-time national champion. You squared off once or twice against him, didn't you? Just for workouts? For workouts, back when I first started my international competition, Coach Kristoff was an assistant for the Junior World Championships. And I, did, I learned some of my wrestling from Coach Kristoff. We see this upper body tie. Each man has an underhook and an overhook. This could, this could lead to a big move, but they break out of it. Roger's going to have to start opening up. He's trailing. It's all right trying to slide in behind Singleton. Could not quite do it. Now tries a throw, and again, Singleton holds on. Warning, Green! Green has just been warned. In other words, the referee feels that he's stalling and he's being passive in his attacks. Tim Wright, again, it seems to be controlling that upper body tie. He had double underhooks there, and if he had enough room, could have scored. 32 seconds remaining in the second period. And you can see it's Tim that moves across the circle to meet Roger. So Tim is still being aggressive, looking for the takedown. Look for him to spin here. He's going to keep spinning. He's got to get all the way around behind him. Clear that arm. And he couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Roger's starting to uh, bend over a little bit. He seems to be uh, beginning to fatigue a little bit. He looked up at the clock, too, while he was on the mat. And that's the first sign, just as a runner starts to look over his shoulder to see who's catching up, that he might be getting tired. Now, Tim Wright was courted by Iowa State. But uh, his grades in high school at Rock Island, Illinois, uh, not good enough. Came here to Southern Illinois. I asked him today if he had any regrets. Certainly, that man right there has no regrets that that youngster came here to Southern He's had no problems with his grades since he's come here. And that is the Grand Valley State coach, Jim Scott, who's also Roger Singleton's coach. Singleton, at one point, was a track star in junior high school, but when he got to the high school level, he was too small, just couldn't keep up with the bigger guy, switched to wrestling, and said uh, it was a great choice, and he's glad he did it at such a young age. Well, Roger chose the down position, and that was a smart move, because if he escapes, he'll tie the score up, which he just did. It is now 2-2. Two to two. He gets one point for an escape. And now it becomes a sprint to the finish with 1.45 remaining in the match. Tied at 2. I imagine Tim might be feeling a little bit of pressure. I'm sure he would have wanted to leave going into the third period. Now he's going to have to work for his victory. But great things don't come easy. He keeps coming real close to whipping him around there. And he's spinning, he's spinning trying to spin around. And Roger's hanging onto his arms. Keep him from getting around behind. And he's moving towards the other. And he gets it. What a move by Tim Wright. It's going to be tough for Roger to score when he's on his knees. He's got to be up on his feet. When you're on your knees, you have very limited movement. Tim Wright took advantage of it. I look for Tim to try to keep him down now the whole time. What a move by the 118 pound champ. And here you'll see it. He's down on his knees and he starts to spin. As he moves around behind, he scores his two. That's the situation with just over a minute to go in the match. I'm sure Tim's going to try to ride him for at least another five seconds. He'll get riding time at that point, and that's an additional point at the end of the, at the, end of the match. If you can keep your opponent in a down position, that a cumulative time, cumulative time of more than one minute. An escape for Singleton. It is now a 4-3 match under a minute to go. 
Hamilton will need a big, big move here. Teammates. 